This is the University of Rochester. The Rochester Black History Struggle Oral History Project is a collaborative effort, a collaboration with law and the U of R Department of Rare Books and Special Collections. Uh, Laura is interviewing uh, Rochesterians or former Rochesterians who uh, were contemporaries of the riot, um, either as activists or participants in some cases, or keen observers, black or white. The riots began after a street dance on a July night, July 24th in 1964. It lasts for three days. The chief of police car is overturned in the streets. Destruction of, of property takes place. The riot woke people in Rochester up. Um, all of a sudden, Rochester realized this problem is big and, and it's much bigger than, than what we can handle. I would hope that the oral project would reveal at least the most truthful aspects of the civil rights activity in Rochester. For example, I've heard things like, well, nothing happened in Rochester until after the riots. Lots of things happened in Rochester prior to the riots. Uh, there were many movements. You had a strong NAACP. You had, a, you had picketing of, uh, uh, of Woolworth, sympathy picketing of the Shine Theaters. So these stories really reshape what we know about Rochester history and about the black freedom struggle. Rochester is in the forefront of changes that are happening along the nation at every step of the way. Nixon's black capitalism plan was an outgrowth of what happened in Rochester. There were strategies that were used to end apartheid in South Africa to end the Vietnam War that were pioneered by the fight organization in their struggle with Eastman Kodak here in Rochester. I mean, there are some really um, phenomenal contributions that this history makes to our, our national scholarship. This is the University of Rochester.